I hope it feels like we're going very step by step through this. If not, please get in touch with me um, to fill in any gaps. But my goal is to go very linearly, very step by step and build up the tools that we have to use to solve chemistry problems. Now we're going to tackle the idea of using chemical formulas as conversion factors for moles. And question number one is a problem that uh, we've seen a similar one, if not the same one previously in the lecture notes. It says, how many atoms of hydrogen are there in one formula unit of ammonium carbonate? And in fact, to find the molar mass of this correctly, you need to know that. We just did it in the previous lecture video for this lecture outline. Um, but so it would be two times four. So there are actually eight hydrogens. in one formula unit of ammonium carbonate. In one formula unit, ammonium carbonate. And we've used this as a unit conversion before where you can put one above the other, uh, eight hydrogens. And we've said per one and now I think we use formula unit though, and NH42CO3. Oh, I think we did uh, ammonium sulfate before, so similar problem. Now we're gonna ask the same question, but for moles, how many moles of hydrogen are there in one mole of this? And the short answer is the same. It's an eight to one ratio, but let me show you how we could show you how to do the math for this not that we're going to end up doing it. But we have eight hydrogens. And if we were to take this uh, per one formula unit of ammonium carbonate, and if we were to multiply this times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd over 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, which is just one, meaning many time you multiply by one, you're going to keep it a true mathematical statement. What we get up here in the top is actually eight moles because one mole has one of these eight times that would be eight moles hydrogen over one mole of ammonium carbonate. And Technically, it's eight moles of hydrogen atoms, but we tend to not write that. Once we get the units of moles in there, we're gonna let that part go. And so it's just gonna be eight moles of hydrogen per, uh, per or over one mole of ammonium carbonate formula units. So that's really the answer to this question. And this is going to be our new unit conversion factor in terms of moles and <laughs> pretty soon it's going to be all moles so we're going to leave behind largely atoms and molecules it's going to be all moles moles everywhere moles for you and moles for you and moles for you moles for everyone so now let me just write the answer down here how many moles of hydrogen are there in one mole of that? So uh, eight moles. And now we'll just use H over one mole of ammonium carbonate. And so this is our new unit conversion factor. It's based on the fact that we've already done this for atoms and or molecules and or formula units. And so we will start using it pretty quickly. I think in this, so how many grams of hydrogen are there in 45.2 grams of ammonium carbonate? So we see the number in this problem. That's going to be our given. 45.2 grams ammonium carbonate. We're going to have a nice long picket fence for this one as well. And for this one, uh, our final units are grams of hydrogen. 
<laughs> All right. So um, here's one pro tip for this course is any time from now on I give you grams and a formula, you're going to convert it into moles using the molar mass. So pro tip, first unit conversion is going to be a molar mass. Let's go ahead and do it and see how we feel about that next. Um, do we have the molar mass of ammonium carbonate? Yes, we do. We did it in a previous lecture video. It's 96.09 grams of ammonium carbonate for one mole of ammonium carbonate. And we want grams of hydrogen. And so our new friend, the conversion factor from the last page, says that for every one mole of ammonium carbonate, there are eight moles of hydrogen. And again, this is just based strictly on pulling it out of the formula. And I want my moles of ammonium carbonate on the bottom. And I don't know if this will fit. I apologize for that. I went over my little picket there. So uh, this is our new unit conversion, again, based strictly on the formula. Now I can see I have moles of hydrogen, and I want grams of hydrogen. That's going to be the molar mass of hydrogen, which from our periodic table is 1.008. grams per mole hydrogen. I can see that I want grams on the top and I need to cancel my units of moles out. Like so. And if I go back, I have my grams and grams of ammonium carbonate canceling. I have my moles top to bottom canceling. And now I have my moles of hydrogen canceling as well, leaving me with grams of hydrogen. Careful where you put your numbers, right? This, uh, so it is easy to just put the units and not think. Uh, anyway, take your time. We'll get through this. Breathe. And multiply. All right. Multiply and divide. I have 45.2. Uh, divided by 96.09 times 1 divided by 1, we don't need to do that, times 1.008. I get 0 0.474 grams of hydrogen, which hopefully kind of, I mean, in general it makes sense. I don't know if the exact number makes sense, but of 45.2 grams, I certainly have to have, since hydrogen is only a part of this molecule, has to be a uh, number less than 45.2, so thumbs up on that. Um, hydrogen is pretty uh, light. Wait a minute. <laughs> For those of you watching, you probably caught this, and I just caught it. Again, because I reflected on what the problem should be, and I used one mole here, so that doesn't make any sense. Um, I just, on the last page, derived that this should be eight. All right, so going back, there's my eight. Eight moles of hydrogen. I need to see it again. I know you don't. There it is. So now, I thought it looked a little small, but in, anyway. So always review your problems. There's me making a mistake and trying to turn it into a teaching tip. And we'll see. All right, so 45.2 divided by 96.9 times 8 times 1.008. All right, I think I, I feel happier now. 3.76 grams. See, I, I just wasn't even thinking, and I wrote one there. So easy to do. Um, I'm glad I caught it as part of this video. <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, 
Couple more examples. Uh, we're going to work this one and then this one I want you to do on your own as part of your lecture outline. Um, and put your answer down because I will be checking it. So for this one, it says how many grams of carbon are there in 91.1 grams of, well this is the formula given, but really we know this is named acetic acid. We know it's an acid because it's got the COOH group in the back. Uh, and this is going to be a very similar problem. So given, and I'm going to start all the way over here. Yep, still on the screen. 91.1 grams of CH3COOH. Nice long picket fence. Uh, and we want grams of carbon on the other side there. And as much as I like this structural formula for acetic acid, it's going to be more helpful if I to find the molar mass. And well, let's see, hmm, I don't know. Uh, let's, I, so I'm figuring this out as I go. So, but I am going to try and get so C two, uh, H four, and O two. That's my molecular formula. And that's going to make it easier to find the molar mass. Um, we have grams of carbon that we're looking for. We have grams of acetic acid to start with. Whenever you get grams of anything, whether you know what to do with it or not, use the molar mass. I like to think of myself as a practical person. And by that, I mean that if I can give you the pro tip of any time you turn this, you get grams of something, you turn it into moles, two points on exams, um, do well worth getting, well towards, well working towards getting your answer. Um, and then here, you're going to have our new unit conversion, which is going to be turning the, um, so uh, basically counting atoms in a formula. And then over here, you're gonna have another molar mass. And step by step, uh, we'll get through this problem. Um, let's see, I have two carbons. Carbons are 12.01 grams times two. I have plus uh, four times 1.008 is four in a little bit. Plus two times 16, I'm gonna go with just 32 there and enter that in nice about oxygen. I get 60.05 and 60.05 grams of CH3COOH are how many grams there are in one mole. And you could use the um, structural formula, you can use the molecular formula, whatever's easiest for you as you work through this. Uh, I'm used to seeing acetic acid like this, so maybe that's why I use this as I go through. Now, uh, inside this, there are two carbons, uh, and I should write two moles carbon for every one mole of CH3COH, acetic acid. Now I have moles of carbon. I need grams of carbon. It's going to be another molar mass. As we already mentioned, 12.01 grams per mole is my last molar mass. And it turns out that quite often, although not, as, not always, when you get to this last step, it is oftentimes a molar mass um, too. And you can see that these two molar masses, one has grams on the bottom and one has grams on the top. Before I do my calculating, I double check. There are two carbons there. This is a good unit conversion factor. Well, let's give it a shot. All right, 91.1 divided by 60.05 times two times 12.01. I get 36.44. And to three sig figs, it's going to be 36.4 grams of carbon. Let's see, carbon 
The hydrogens are really small. Carbon should be less than half. I think this answer makes sense. And I think I got it right uh, the first time for my unit conversion. So good news. Like I said, the next problem, uh, please solve it for yourself in the lecture outline. Notes.